Ladies and gentlemen, today I am going to prove to you that you can literally turn any sound into literally any other sound. That means you can turn a snare into a piano or you can turn a white noise into a synthesizer. You can turn whatever the sound you pick into a vocal because all the sounds is just the same thing. So first thing, let's understand what an audio file is. So what's that? What is a snare? I just put the snare here. What is that? So if you zoom in real close, you will see these little dots here. So these are all individual samples of a sound and this is simply speaking an audio data that a computer is reading and then reproducing it through the speakers into sound waves in the air and that goes to your ear and that's how you hear stuff. So this is nothing else than just a combination of these little samples that is creating the sound. So technically you could have a generator and you could literally generate the same sound as you could generate an acapella. Let me like a symphony. The reason you can hear it is because this long and complex sound has a right combination and the right sequence of little samples that when they are connected together they create a vocal. That's the magic of this. So by going into this direction you can literally have a computer generate the same vocal you can literally make this vocal from scratch using the method that i'll show you but like the more complex the sound is the more time it's gonna take to recreate it so if you want to recreate the vocal make certain phrases in it and make it actually sound really good you can literally just sit for like i don't know maybe 10 years and just like sample by sample or like piece by piece make this vocal identically the same but like that's gonna take so much time that makes no sense to do this right that's how for example google translator works it creates an audio data and then is being played back by a well by a computer so for example you have these ai websites that literally just generate vocals so the reason the computer is able to do this is because i think they used an ai like a deep learning system that analyzed many vocals and understood what samples have to be one after another in order to create a vocal so human would be able to do this but it's just like understanding a computer data and, and the computer is much better on doing so right by the way smoke weed every day. Dude, it, it even rhymes. So, <laughs> boom. A manifestation of what your day made by, hey, by the way, smoke weed every day. <laughs> Hell yeah. So if we download this, put into Ableton, well, you know what's gonna happen. Well, this is, this is audio file. It has to have samples, right? This is nothing other than audio data. You can have a computer generate any sound, literally any sound. If it understands what makes a certain sound, it can literally just make this sound, generate the audio data and make this sound real and audible. So now once you understand what the audio is, I'm gonna show you how you can turn any sound into any sound. So as an example, we're gonna be using a white noise because it's like most messy sound. It has no tonal information. If you have just a little bit of the audio data, you can create any sound. The easiest sounds are gonna be synths and glitches and noises, but hardest ones are gonna be real life instruments. Let's take a look at a whiteness. So in order to turn it into an actual sound, we gotta find like an element that will allow us to have a base of that sound, right? Maybe let's cut that noise here. We have this part, this is still really high. If we take a look at EQ, you can see that there's just a click. Basically, if you've been using Serum or any other wavetable synthesizer, this is what you're looking at actually just the waveform. As you can hear, this is really high pitch. So in physics, length equals pitch. So the longer the sound is, the lower its pitch. And the faster the sound is, the higher its pitch. Pitch is down. And as you can see, it's slowing down. So now, as you can see, we got more like a lower sound. We got more like a waveform that kind of makes sense a little bit right here. Take that because it kind of reminds of a sine wave and sine wave is a really good basis for any sound. Take this white noise and slap it into a sampler. As you can see, it's just like a small tiny bit of that noise sample. I think it's even in stereo. Create a new audio file, turn a resampling, put a utility on this and just leave one of these stereo channels only. We get this waveform. We have this wave into the sampler and what you can do right now is you can play it as a synthesizer. First of all, you gotta loop this. And you can play it as a synthesizer. This is some sort of waveform, right? And because it's looping, if you play a higher pitch, it's gonna be looping faster. And when you play a lower pitch, it's looping really low. So I found the oscilloscope, and as you can see, this is literally the this this wave. So the waveform, in order for it to loop nicely, you need to position that on this middle line here. So it loops right here and not here because it's gonna create clicks. Here, that clicks. What is actually a sound? Like if you take a look at EQ, what is this? 
you can see these kind of like spikes, right? What are these spikes? Are sine waves. Every single spike is a sine wave. So we can do like a brick wall EQ, cut it here and isolate this sine wave. Take that further. You're just gonna have higher pitched sine waves. If we take a look at, a, at oscilloscope right now, you can see that this is a sine wave. Boom! I want to use this sine wave and put it into the sampler. We need to somehow get that sine wave be playable. Simple thing, play it back and record. So now what you get is a really long, nice sine wave. You need to have one cycle of it and one cycle is from zero crossing to zero crossing. That's a one cycle and that's a sine wave. Let's just consolidate that and let's put that into the sampler. Let's just make sure it doesn't click. So as you move this guy into different samples, you got more of a sine wave, right? From this point, you have just a sine wave and you can keep adding effects to create different instruments. Yeah, so check this out. I'm adding erosion, a cassette simulation, some reverb, To make different instruments, you need to have different waveforms. Now we have a sine wave only. To change the waveform of the sound, you can use a distortion. So if I start adding distortion. You can hear more of a square wave. And then we have a wave shaper. So you can literally just shape the waveform of the sound. this out I can resample it and just put it back into the sampler to play with it. I would recommend using the sine wave if you're making a sound instead of resampling and then putting this resampled sound into the sampler. It depends on the scenario but basically what happens that this sound right now let's say you make a synth plug so this synth plug is gonna sound better and cleaner on different pitches inside the synthesizer rather than after it's being resampled and put into the sampler because of how the formants are changing to unit. Check this out. Let's say you want to make a sick 808. You can slap a distortion. Your G sub bass will turn into a sub bass with more harmonics. And that's also gonna change what the waveform looks like, right? Remember that sound is a combination of sine waves. So what you literally can do is you can create a group, duplicate the chain. So now we have just, just a low G note. What you do is you basically detune it up. That works as a harmony. You can cite the volume. So we are adding an octave right now. So duplicate it once again, add another octave. Duplicate it once again. So we are adding fifth here. So now we have added harmonics manually. We can even add one more octave up. And we get kind of like an organ road sound. So that is an idea that's really cool. If you have a synthesizer, use a synthesizer. Don't waste time for this. But this is like really interesting concept. So maybe let's make a little melody. Reverb. Add a little bit of the delay, maybe. You can make kicks. You can make all sorts of different stuff. If you want to learn how to exactly make a kick and snare and other sounds inside a synthesizer, you can check out the, the drum sound design tutorial. It's really popular. I don't know why. In here, basically, go pitch envelope. Add some distortion. Copy this there. Get down, what are you waiting for? So check this out. I'm gonna add a new instrument and that instrument is gonna be a piano mode. I'm gonna go into, for example, Alicia's keys, dry preset. Let's actually make sure there's no reverb on it. 
make sure this is the same note. Make sure this is the same octave as well. The other way to get audio data is through the sine waves. So as you can see, those are all the sine waves and what you can do, and we'll just experiment a little bit with that, is you can... So as you can see, the envelope of it goes down like that. So we gotta make sure that our sine wave has a similar envelope, so... So we matched the envelope right now, right? The piano is gonna be on the right. The synth is gonna be on the left. This is one of the sine waves of the piano, the fundamental one. I'm just gonna keep duplicating them, the sine waves, and I'm gonna build a piano keynote. So check this out. So I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna start offsetting it and make sure this is the same note, which we can do by just hovering. 523, 523, yeah, the same one. If we solo these, have the same thing. There's a little bit of the room difference, but uh, let's keep going. So next one is here and that's 786. Why did it fail? Is it because it's in the room? I don't think so. Oh my God. <laughs> Whoa. Wait a sec. Oh my god. The piano sounds better, but... What the fuck, dude? Okay, wait. This is all this stuff is turned off. It does sound really similar, but it's not the same. So, wait, let me... It's not only the sine waves, then. This one is more defined, kinda. Now you can hear that this is kinda like, um... An issue with formants right now when I'm picking this up. Can I actually wait? Can I actually do this if I go here in Complex Pro formants 100%? My CPU is dying? Bro. Okay, but we did it. Let's see. Okay, it's kind of cool. Let's see a MIDI file. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen. Here's the deal, I didn't add high frequencies because I was like, well, there's like 20 frequencies, I'm not gonna add this, it's just gonna take a million ages and like, I don't really care that much. I think that's it, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you learned something, well, I guess you did. That's cool. This is one of the most interesting and fascinating topics. Check out oversample.us. Why, why haven't you checked out oversample.us yet? What are you waiting for? There's like cinematic drum kit right now. You see this? You see how awesome this is? Damn. It's how sample pack oh my god future based toolkit what look at this are you looking at this loops one shots <laughs> midi a cappella. why haven't you checked this out yet what are you waiting for you're missing out you're clearly missing out i don't understand i don't know what you're waiting for dude look how beautiful this artwork is people say it's obs see obs people say this artwork is obs this artwork is bananas what are you waiting for if you're looking for plugins plugins at oversample.us punch the best transient shaper on the planet ocs the best cassette simulation on the planet okay have a good day